The text for our sermon this second Sunday of Epiphany is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 35 to 51, in which Jesus calls a number of his disciples. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them, following, and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, When you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Here ends our reading. Let us pray. O Lord, may we search you with all of our heart. Do not let us go astray from your commandments. Act so that we Hold tightly to your word and hold it dear in our hearts so that we would not sin against your law or against you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When I was the camp uh, pastoral advisor, the the camp chaplain at uh, Aurora Camp in Thunder Bay, I would always participate when they played hide-and-seek on all the territory of the camp. All of the counselors would go and hide, and all of the, the children would go hunting for them. For the children, the goal was simple, to find all the people hidden. And for the counselors and the adults who played, the goal was to hide in such a way that you wouldn't be found right away, but still that you would be able to keep tabs on what is going on, and that you would be able to respond in case of emergency. Actually, really, you did want to be found. And I, I remember times where I would have people looking for me, and I would call out to them, Yoo-hoo! And they knew they were close, and it was an encouragement for them to keep looking until they found me. 
the readings that are dealing with today deal with the call of God. Bede the Venerable, a 7th century monk, said, even though we study Moses and the prophets, he found us. And having been found, we have found him. This quote helps us to better understand the way in which people find God. It's God who finds us first. But from our point of view, it seems like we've found him. Paul cites Psalm 14 to tell us the real situation in which we find ourselves. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned to their own way. That is to say that sinful man, left to himself, would never go looking for God. In the call of Samuel, which was the Old Testament lesson that was read, did Samuel go hunting for the Lord? No. It was that he heard the voice of God, and he thought it was Eli calling him. So he would go and see Eli, and it was only after having been woken up a number of times that he clued in and told, um, told Samuel to say, Speak, for your servant listens. The reality is, is that we, in and of ourselves, can't run away from God. The psalmist tells us, If I go up to the highest heavens, you are there. If I go to the depths of Sheol, there you are. If I take wings and go to the farthest ends of the earth, you are there also, and your hand will, will, will direct me. So for us, we can't run away from God. But we can't find God unless he first comes to us. But the good news is, is that God comes to us because he does want to be found. He puts in the heart of man the thought of eternity. He, he, he engages with our lives. For example, the Israelites were rejecting him, and so he punished them, and the result was that they began to search for God, to come back to him, to turn to him. They remembered that God was their rock and that the Almighty was the one who had redeemed them. God wants us to seek him, even though from our point of view it seems like we're finding him first. James writes, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But it really, it is God who first draws near to us in the hopes that we would find him in the same way that I wanted the kids at the camp to find me as we played hide-and-seek. In the text of the Gospel lesson, which was read, John the Baptist directed two of his disciples to Jesus, saying to them, Behold the Lamb of God. These disciples began to follow Jesus, and Jesus turned and said, What are you looking for? And the truth be told, they probably didn't know what they were looking for. They were just trusting what John the Baptist had told them. When I went to seminary, I didn't go to study at the feet of a particular professor. No, I simply trusted the recommendation of my own pastor who said, there's the seminary for you. What the disciples did that John's disciples did, is they trusted their master. And so they answered to Jesus, Rabbi, where are you staying? By calling Jesus Rabbi, they were saying that they wanted to become his disciples and to learn from him. It seems that they had chosen Jesus. But really, we must understand that Jesus wanted to be found. In the ancient world, normally it was the disciple who chose the master. It was only the most elite rabbis who could pick and choose which students, which disciples they would accept. And they could do that knowing that there were other candidates waiting in the wings. If you wanted to get the attention of the great rabbi, you might attend the right synagogue, or hang out with 
um, at the same events as the, the teacher or um, say something profound that might get his attention. And that way, the rabbi might invite the potential student to follow him. But that isn't Jesus. You see, Jesus invited these disciples to follow him. He doesn't reject them. He doesn't put them through an interview process. He doesn't put conditions on them becoming his disciples. No. He invited them to where he was staying. Andrew trusted Jesus. And so he told his brother Simon. And it wasn't Simon who drew near to Jesus so that he might become Jesus' disciple. No, Jesus called Simon. You are Simon, son of Jonas, and you will be called Peter. Jesus called him by a new name and gave him a new identity. And then we have the last people that Jesus called, Philip and Nathaniel. Jesus drew near to Philip and said to him, follow me. And he did. And then Philip went and sought Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses wrote in the law and about whom the prophets spoke, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Jesus used Philip to call Nathanael. God uses us so that our friends, our family members, our neighbors might hear the call of Christ that they might also become his disciples. When Nathaniel, or as for Nathaniel, he wasn't looking for a guru, a teacher, a rabbi, and he didn't have any trust in what Philip was talking about. And that becomes evident by the way he responds. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But Philip doesn't defend Jesus. He didn't have all the answers. He just invites Nathaniel. Come, see for yourself. So as Nathaniel drew near, Jesus said to the other disciples, There is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. It was a compliment. But Nathaniel wasn't one to be taken away by um, flattery. And so he says, How do you know me? And Jesus answered him. Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And this answer might be just a demonstration of the fact that Jesus is all-knowing. But certain theologians believe that Nathaniel was praying to the Lord, and that the way Jesus answers is as if he were to say, I am the God to whom you were praying. I heard your prayer. Either which way, we can say with certainty that Jesus' answer convinced him. So much so that he cried out, Master, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus welcomed the disciples of John the Baptist, including Andrew. He called Philip through the witness of his brother and gave him a new identity. He said to Philip, follow me. And he did. And he gave evidence to Nathaniel, who showed that he wasn't quite ready to accept Jesus as the Messiah. And yet, at the end of the day, all of these disciples came to believe in Jesus. And we have to say it wasn't because of themselves, but it was because of the grace of God towards them that Jesus called them. Those who find Jesus do so because Jesus has found them first. Jesus isn't looking for the cream of the crop. He seeks the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He chooses the weak things of the world to confound the strong. Jesus invites people who are able to make mistakes who are weak, to be faithful. He doesn't go away from them so that we can't find him. No, he says, here I am. Follow me. Follow my teaching. Follow my way of living. Receive the forgiveness of your sins.
And so it is throughout our journey in this life. There are highs and lows, times of great joy, and times of despair. Even when we think that we are all alone. And that we're calling to God out of the depths. He has not abandoned us. He has made us, his disciples, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of, of the Holy Spirit. Learning all that he has to teach us. And doing what we can to put it into practice. And on the paths of our lives, we will encounter people who also need to hear the call of Jesus. And we will speak to them and say, follow him. We are all disciples of the Lord Jesus, of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who has come to take away our sin, to call us to himself. Come, see! That is our invitation to the world. And we have the promise that Jesus will be with us always to the very end of the age. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds steadfast in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.